So I want to thank you all for taking some time out of your busy day to learn more about CoView, our telehealth partner. Um, a few housekeeping items before we get started. We kindly ask that you leave your microphone muted for the duration of the meeting. Uh, you won't need your webcam either, but if you want to share your smiling face with us, we won't be one to oppose you. Um, but you can turn that off as well if you like. Uh, this webinar will be recorded and posted to our YouTube channel. So if you have any colleagues you'd like to share this with afterwards, uh, we'll be sending you a link so you can do so. Um, so first, we're going to start with a little introduction from Steve Pressament. Uh, you may recognize the name, president and founder of Practice Perfect. Then we're going to have our presentation from the kind folks at CoView. And lastly, we're going to do a little Q&A. So if you have any questions that you'd like answered, please feel free to type them in the chat box. Uh, it should be on the right hand side of your screen. Uh, I'm going to type a message so you can see what it looks like. So feel free to uh, type any messages here. Um, now I'm going to hand it over to Steve and he's going to give us a little introduction. Hi, everyone. Matt, I just want to make sure everybody can hear me. Matt, can you hear me? Can you all see me? Yep. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thanks. I just want to thank everybody for coming. My comments will be um, uh, will be brief, so thank you for taking the time. Just a bit of background uh, regarding telehealth. Um, um, I'm not sure how many of you are using a different application right now with telehealth. How many of you might be using InSig Health, which was as our other um, telehealth partner uh, right now. Basically, just a bit of background. We got into telehealth very, very quickly when COVID hit. Uh, we didn't have a lot of chance to do due diligence to really check out the space to see what was working, what wasn't working. We had to find a partner very, very quickly, hence the association with InSig Health. Um, since then, we've had a long time to understand exactly what people need out of a telehealth application to figure out what's good, what's bad, uh, you know, that's so, that sort of thing. We're still supporting the integration with InSig, but we found CoView. Um, and just a, a very quick, um, uh, just a, a quick background about um, about why CoView, which you'll see uh, during this particular session, uh, we found this to be a far better application, far more robust. Uh, things like in-application tests and interaction with the patient, which you're going to see a much better interface, a much more modern technology than we have with InSig. A much easier integration. Integration with CoView for us was a was a was a breeze compared to to InSig. One of the big issues with InSig for those using it is you do have to use their scheduler. That's not the case with Kobe, so it saves some aggravation when it comes to schedules changing and notification of upcoming appointments. Um, and lastly, our um, our the pricing with Kobe was much more reasonable than it is uh, with InSig, especially for smaller practices. So there's a number of reasons how you know why we've made this move. The, the primary ones being the integration is simpler, less room for error. We're not worried about the scheduler, and again, the pricing is um, is much better as well. And again, the ability to do a lot more during the actual call with the patient, which you'll see, uh, much much more interactive, um, and um, hopefully much more pleasing as well. So again, uh, everybody enjoy. Uh, as always, we appreciate your continued support of uh, Practice Perfect. Uh, we welcome your feedback both about Practice Perfect and about the integration with CoView. And um, I'm going to hand it back to Matt. Thank you very much, Steve. Uh, appreciate some background on the integration itself. And uh, at this point, we're going to have Kirk from CoView kick us off. Hey, everybody. Just want to do a sound check. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes, sir. Got it. Thank you. Awesome. So first of all, thank you for joining us today. And Steve and Matt, thanks for having us. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. And we're really excited to kick off the partnership. And so what we thought we'd do is just spend a few minutes introducing CoView uh, to those of you who have joined us today. Um, we're really excited and um, you know, launching uh, in full force into Canada and the United States. And our partnership with Practice Perfect EMR has just been super beneficial to those efforts. So together, Practice Perfect and EMR, I think we're really looking to care for some of the most vulnerable and underserved patient populations uh, across the industry. Okay, so um, I am, uh, by way, do quick introductions of the CoView team. We, we went with black and white today. I hope you, got, I hope you think it's snazzy. Somebody. All right, no, 
not sure who that was. I didn't see anything on my screen. So anyways, uh, sorry for the interruption. Go back to introductions. So my name is Kirk Kirkman, and uh, I am the president of Coview Corporation, which is Coview in the United States and Canada. I'm also the chief commercial officer for Coview Global. So we're really, uh, really on a roll and super excited to bring uh, the Coview platform to North America uh, and be about the business of helping more and more patients and care teams. Um, each of my colleagues will introduce themselves and then we'll continue on with the presentation. Jenna, if you'd be so kind, that'd be great. Hi everyone, can everyone hear me? Sorry that we keep asking. I, I don't know if it's my service or not, but you're good. Um, nice to meet you all, to meet you all. I'm Jenna Salcedo. I am part of the Coview team for about a year now doing sales and partnerships. Great. Okay, guys, I'm Peter Simpson Young calling in from Sydney, Australia. Um, I'm one of the team here at Coview uh, in Sydney, and I'm primarily looking after the Physio Room project, which we will be speaking a bit further about today. Um, real quick before Danielle introduces herself, P Peter's very humble. He joined just before the pandemic and has probably helped over 20,000 providers go live on Coview. And Coview is in Australia, in fact, what I would call a utility. The, the, the country relies on Covey. We have about a 70% market share. So we'll talk more about that as we go through the presentation, but Peter's been great in helping to blaze that trail and a great partner with care teams uh, across the world now. Awesome, Danielle. Hi, I'm Danielle. Um, I'm in Atlanta and I did something that I messed up my camera. Um, so I don't know how to put it back on. Uh, and I am brand new to Coview and I'm really excited and just, I, I come from a behavioral health, mental health background and just the, the technology is amazing. Awesome. Uh, so again, Steve and, and Matt, thanks again for arranging this session. Uh, we're really excited about it. So, uh, let's, I wanted to just spend five minutes introducing you to who Coview is. We are um, we were founded out of a government organization in Australia called CISRO. That's how they pronounce it. Um, and they were doing research on, on telemedicine. And our founders, uh, Dr. Sylvia Pfeiffer and Nathan Ullman, uh, were employees there and created a technology that felt really cool. And they broke out of CISRO and raised money and uh, started started Covium. Um, Health Direct Australia is, is the largest organization in Australia that contracts with each of the seven states of Australia. And they selected Covio as their platform uh, just before the pandemic. And we have been on a wild ride with them. Uh, inception to date, and I'm, I'm gonna bury the lead here or not bury the lead, inception to date, we've done 7.5 million doctor patient video visits on the Coview platform, 7.5 million. So it's a pretty substantial number. Um, in 2021, we came to the United States, Janice Salcedo um, and another colleague led the, the creation of some customer relationships. So we have about five, a couple of very large behavioral health clinics in the United States that are in various stages of going live right now, which is very exciting. Um, we, we see some differences between the Australian market and the US market. I think the most common difference is the US providers are very aware of getting information into and out of their EMR. So that system of record is much more central to a, to a US or Canadian provider than it is an Australian provider. I suspect that'll change, that gap will close over the years right now, but having a relationship with Practice Perfect EMR, after every single demonstration that we've done to a Practice Perfect EMR practice, I get on the phone with Steve and Matt and, and we, we figure out what's the best solution if we haven't already thought about it. So we're iterating very rapidly to, to make sure the relationship leads to robust engagement with, uh, with you folks, the Practice Perfect EMR client base. So I mentioned uh, Dr. Sylvia Pfeiffer. Uh, this is Sylvia here. Uh, she's written a book called Beyond the Clinic. She was an early employee of Google and her superpower, at least from a technical standpoint, is video compression. And so she was at Google uh, Mozilla, a couple of high profile tech companies, and then joined Cicero. And as I mentioned, broke out of Cicero and co-founded Coview with Nathan. Um, we've done the 7.5 million video visits that I've mentioned. Um, it, post pandemic, as the pandemic eases, we're seeing 
that number is going to come down uh, on a run rate. So we did 3.5 million in the last 12 months, but we are seeing that it's it's stabilizing and folks are embracing hybrid care. There are many facilities throughout Australia, for example, where the ER triage is actually done on the CoView platform, and that's going to remain in place post pandemic. So we've We've, because we've got such market share in Australia, and as I mentioned, it's about 70%, we're virtually in all modalities of care. Um, allied health as a category, which makes up you know, speech pathology, physical therapy for, from our standpoint, our definition, um, and, and, and behavioral health, that's probably 2 million of the 3.5 million. And, and the others, uh, a lot of primary care and other sort of smaller specialties along the way. Um, just to, for those of you who have heard of a large organization called Teladoc, just to give you a sense of this scale, uh, we do 54% of the volume of Teladoc, which is a publicly traded US, U.S. company. So we're doing 54% of the volume that they do, and we really haven't hit the United States and Canada yet. So we're really excited about the opportunity uh, because we think we've built something. Because we have so much, such intense utilization uh, in Australia that our feature function build out has been robust. And I think you'll see that as we navigate the application today. Uh, privacy and security are things that, you know, five, 10 years ago, we used to, when we would talk about privacy and security, we had to convince folks that we had uh, privacy and security, but today it's table stake. So we're HIPAA compliant, ISO 27001, and, and we maintain uh, a, a significant commitment to making sure that we're, we're remaining uh, aligned with those goals and hopefully influencing them where we can, where they do an open call for ideas on how to evolve the security. Um, one of the powerful things about, uh, about CoView is we've tried to eliminate friction for patients. We have patients of all types, as you can imagine, tech savvy, uh, aged, aged care population, uh, folks who are really sick. So we really seek to eliminate uh, that friction and one click uh, following the URL link and they will join you uh, however you've decided they should join. They can go straight to an exam room if that's the way you've chosen to instrument your practice on CoView or they could go into a waiting room through a virtual front door. Uh, we do have an interactive waiting queue. So imagine a world where you were, let's say your, uh, your, your particular practice has eight locations. Um, you could have a waiting room for each of the locations and you could have your administrative staff when a patient arrives, go greet the patient, look after patient responsible, look after whatever forms uh, needed to be filled out, get those filled out and then put the patient back in the waiting room. If some of the providers don't want the pressure of seeing who's there to see them next because they want to stay focused on, on their particular session. But so they can, when they're done with the patient, they just go out to the waiting room, they see the patient and they take the patient into their exam room. So we've really designed it to be like physical bricks and mortar practice of medicine. The waiting queue is interactive. So if, if, uh, if Dr. Salcedo starts to fall behind, I as the admin can send a quick text message on Jenna's behalf to the patient, saying that Jenna's running 10 minutes behind you, the patient can respond. And a lot of times we're dealing with patients, all of us, when we're patients, we think our, our thing is the most important thing in the world. And it's really a comfort, a comforting factor when we get high net promoter score on the ability for the practice to interact at that point in time. Um, I know you have some, some SMS and email reminder functionality native to practice perfect EMR, and that would always be the first choice. Um, we also have a, a similar set of functionality um, we also have uh, alerts that we can send to your care team to remind them uh, if you chose to do that. But I'm sure there's, you know, we don't want to we we don't want to facilitate alert fatigue. But th those things are available. And as I mentioned earlier, notifications to patients. So we, virtual waiting area we think is a great driver of patient satisfaction and relaxing. We have a very aesthetically pleasing waiting room. They have a choice of music there. Once they set their music, the the, the they relax until the provider actually sees them. We are purpose-built for healthcare. So we compete a lot against Zoom and Teams, which of course had a, a terrific rise during the pandemic. And I think they served a really important function to get big fast. But what, what care teams are telling us is that that's not enough for the practice of medicine at scale. It was good to get through the pandemic, but now we really need to start to return to the practice of medicine. We need to embrace hybrid care, you know, and, and practices need to, need to make sure that their care teams, whether it's a CMIO, chief nursing officer, that they establish the standard of care for their instrumentation of telehealth. What, because there's a lot of shadow decisions being made. I come across four or five 
uh, six location practices, and each one of them might be using something entirely different. Could you imagine if with that? Imagine that with an EMR. You know, we're going to use eClinical Works over here. Those guys are using all scripts over there. It just wouldn't be the case. And I think that that having a point of view on the practice of medicine uh, is now the time is now to embrace that concept as well with telehealth. Um, additional things that are purpose built here are um, pre-call consent customization, post-call surveys. Um, again, waiting room functionality, we can greet the patient, we can have a conversation about patient responsible if we choose to do that. Um, and then we can have two-way messaging with the patient while they wait. And as you can see here, we've got assessments. There are over 55 uh, assessments, um, it, Pearson assessments and other assessments. There's probably another 50 assessments that we've uh, stood up that were the assessments that are proprietary to a practice but we have a service to also have their assessments available to them when they go live. So here you see we have assessments for speech pathology, we have them for mental health, we have them for a variety of specialties. Our app marketplace, so some examples of those Pearson assessments that I mentioned, uh, the self five, the clinical evaluation of language fundamentals, fifth edition. We have the Peabody picture vocab, um, forms A and B, um, other ones uh, for, for our behavioral health uh, colleagues, we have post-traumatic stress disorder, the PCL5. A very common one is the PHQ9, the GAD7, or the K10. Most uh, Many behavioral health clinics want to do these assessments on a regular basis throughout the year. Um, Matt was kind enough to film an instructional video when these assessments are done, how to save those assessments to a PDF and get them into the right spot and practice perfect EMR, which is your system of record. CoView is your system of action for facilitating a patient visit virtually. We wanna get that uh, assessment saved to a PDF, and then we wanna get it into the right spot so your colleagues will have access to that. In addition, you'll know, you may remember the assessment, but we wanna make sure that lives um, and, and breathes uh, beyond just the individual visit. So getting it into practice perfect EMR, uh, essential. Now, we, we don't need our brand perpetuated throughout the United States and Canada. So we completely white label our platform. If you whoop, forgive me, we completely white label our platform. If you if you choose the uh, the enterprise level, and so that's a great way to extend your brand out into the marketplace. We'll have your logo, your custom domain, um, and we'll make sure that uh, you know as you as you compete out in the marketplace, that folks know that it that it's apps that it's your platform and your choice to service them uh, in this great fashion. You know, I've been I've done nothing in my lifetime other than healthcare. Um, I spent the bulk of my formative years and uh, at Athena at Athena Health uh, an EMR, and I know that every healthcare IT deployment is a success or a failure before it even starts, and and it requires good governance, good transparency, establishing KPIs, and making sure we deploy the technology in a way that mirrors your desire, your intended practice of medicine. So we'll have single sign-on capabilities, a dedicated implementation team it's led, led by a colleague of ours, uh, Melanie Cologne, who is a registered nurse and is leading our implementation and customer success teams. Um, we have a profound, profound commitment to data-driven governance. Data sets us free and points the right way. Um, so we make sure that we have good transparency around data um, and exclusive access to knowledge articles that we have in place for our customers and video tutorials. Perhaps you're a small practice. Uh, you don't need a full heavy lift implementation. We've got YouTube videos, many of them filmed by our own Pete, who's with us today on the call, to help you understand what you how to get to get beyond the video functionality, but get to the clinical content that operate at the top of your license on your telehealth uh, platform. And of course, we have real-time act, you'll have real-time access to the CoView team to have a chat session uh, and certainly call in if, if, if necessary. Um, we have state-of-the-art reporting capabilities so that data-driven governance that, that sits, sits on, on, on structured data so we can uh, make sure we have good reporting across the organization, your clinics, consultation durations, waiting times. So if we're managing, if we're managing a, a, a practice, say one of the locations of a five, a five location practice had gotten a little bit disorganized, got a new leadership team, we can make sure that you're having a good sense of how they're comparing against the rest of the cohort. So, uh, you know, big believer in monthly sessions to, to go through those KPIs and make sure that we're serving you in a way that's intended as you embrace 
hybrid care, or you know, however you choose to instrument your telehealth program. So one of the things I think, sorry about that. One of the things I think distinguishes CoView from you know, the industrial scale uh, Zoom and Teams, but, but also many other telehealth companies is that we continue to invest in uh, various parts of healthcare that are dramatically underserved or have significant need. So what I wanted to do now is turn it over to Pete and Pete's gonna walk you through a, a joint program we're doing where we have a grant from the Australian government to really look after an important way to evolve telemedicine as it relates to physical therapy. Thanks so much, Kirk. Um, just, yeah, to, by way of introduction, um, as we mentioned earlier, my name is Peter Simpson Young and I was one of the first hundred users um, to sign up to the CoView platform. So I started using CoView back in when it was still a, a you know, a research program over at um, CSIRO. And then just before um, the pandemic hit, I thought there's, um, well, actually it hit you guys in the US, but it hadn't hit us in Australia. And I thought, oh, there's only one health technology that matters right now, and it's gonna be telehealth. And so um, it's been a wild ride. And at the moment, one of the things I'm working on uh, is uh, what I think is one of our most exciting apps um, in development. Um, and uh, that app is, is called PhysioROM, which will be of interest to any physio uh, physical therapists in the audience. And um, we, this is just one of the apps that Kirk has mentioned. Um, and uh, if there's any speech, there's a, a range of um, speech and language uh, assessments that are available, uh, which I think would be interest as well. But as you imagine, Kirk will talk to uh, more. But for the context, uh, PhysioROM um, is trying to solve this important problem with uh, you know, uh, telehealth physiotherapy. And uh, physiotherapists, at least in Australia, have been one of the largest adopters of, um, of telehealth. Uh, uh, but you know, one of the most common issues they report is how do you do assessments of range of motion or ROM uh, or, or a joint angle whilst doing a video call. And one way it's come, sometimes done is, is uh, using what's called a goniometer, um, which is this sort of plastic ruler that measures an angle. Um, and you'll often see physios you know, popping one of these goniometers onto the, onto the screen so that they can try and you know, measure someone's angle remotely. And if we go to the next slide, um, you, we're just talking about the um, you know, CoView being a telehealth platform, which allows us to build things into the platform, you know, allows you, you know, means that we can start doing, we've got a lot of this data that we can start to you know, analyze and um, develop algorithms to, to you know, support the telehealth consult. And so uh, over the last few years, we've been developing uh, this um, PhysioROM tool. Uh, which will measure the joint angle over time. I've put a little GIF here, um, and and then also calculate the minimum and maximum angle throughout a specific movement. And so there's something like six movements that we've currently built the app for. You know, standing, a sit to stand, um, uh, and sort of the most common movements with lower but main focus on uh, lower limbs. And then a that regenerates a report, um, like many of our sort of assessments. That can be that are then automatically stored in the cloud for future access, or, or can be just downloaded by a PDF. And I threw a little technical slide here, um, just just for for any you know uh, geeks in the audience, uh, just describing um, if if you want to go to the next slide, Kirk, that uh, the technology is called pose estimation, um, and uh, so it, it you know takes the video and then uh, infers the, the pose and the way we developed this algorithm um, was, you know 1.5 million dollar grant for the government was to train it on um, was to you know, train an AI algorithm uh, specifically called deep learning uh, or it's a type of deep learning technology called convolutional neural networks if you don't know what it means it doesn't matter it's just some people are curious um, and the the way we trained that AI algorithm was to get 50 people um, and put them in the motion capture, um, well, one of two motion capture facilities. And we recorded a whole bunch of video and we recorded all this motion capture, like you see in, you know, uh, how they record CGI. Um, and then we were able to train that, um, 
the webcam data to be almost as accurate as the uh, um, the the motion, the, you know, gold standard motion capture. And it appears we we're still um, we're just finishing up the validation study at the moment, but it seems to be. Um, I've just said five degrees. I think it's a lot more than five degrees accuracy, but um, uh, it seems to perform better than the, uh, you know, a trained clinician using a goniometer, which is really exciting. Um, so yeah, that's a bit about PhysioROM. Thanks, Kirk. Great. Thanks, Peter. So we look forward to, uh, Peter, real quick, the commercialization of that. Just give, a, give the folks a quick sense of how we're commercializing that and getting the necessary approvals for that. Yeah, so when we started working on PhysioROM, um, the, uh, the international medical device laws meant that it wasn't specifically a medical, it wasn't classified as a medical device. But um, that changed both in Australia and US uh, late last year. And then suddenly it was classified as a medical device. So what I'm working on at the moment is all of the um, specific regulatory hurdles relating to uh, a medical, you know, getting a medical device approved by the FDA in the US and the Australian version of that is the TGA. So we expect it will be um, commercially available, generally available within 12 months. Um, so we'll, we'll have gone through the FDA approval process, um, but uh, we can still like, we provide early access to people um, through a couple of different avenues. So if anyone's particularly keen, then reach out to Kirk or myself and we can facilitate that. Awesome. So now we're going to have now we're going to have the, uh, the the honor of showing our video platform through the Zoom video platform. So I don't know. There's got to be a fancy way to describe doing that, Steve. Maybe from a technical standpoint, it's tunneling or I don't know what it is, but it's <laughs> it's 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 not a common thing to be showing your product through a competitor's product. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna open up the, the CoView platform now and. There I am. Does everyone see me? Pete, do you see me in the CoView platform? Jenna, you do? Thank you. Yeah, so it's a, we really designed, what we want is we want the technology to fall away. You know, with the video um, practice of medicine uh, th through a video or tele telehealth um, is, it, it's much more personal than people think. And there are studies that are popping up you know, all over the world, Australia and the United States, where, you know, compliance is actually a little bit higher. Folks who are recovering from addiction or mental health illness uh, tend to have a higher show, a higher show rate uh, with a video visit versus an in-person visit. I'm sure there are exceptions to that, but it's very, we're very encouraged by that. We want the technology to fall away. So we're in the COVID platform and um, my, uh, my patient's about to arrive and it is Danielle Shelley. There she is right on cue. So the, the phone rings. I don't know if you can all see Danny. Danny is uh, ringing into the practice and I'm going to accept that call. And Danielle will now be uh, ready to see Dr. Kirkman. There we go. Hello, Danny. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. In my, hold on, I'm switching cameras because it's still not from trying to do both at one. Oh, yes. Awesome. There we, there we go. So Danny's on board now. Um, and there's a lot of things that we can do. I mentioned, we mentioned purpose built. So we're in the, we're in the CoView platform right now. We're, I could be an, uh, I could be an ad administrator uh, receiving Danny into her visit getting some paperwork taken care of, collecting copay, uh, then putting her back out into the waiting room, or I could be, I could be a, a provider that just finished my visit and now I'm ready to, to spend time with Danny. Um, we have clinical apps and tools button built in. So I'm clicking, clicking that now. And I've got the ability to open up various cl clinical functionality. So I'll start with just a simple whiteboard. Sometimes we might want to use this uh, with certain types of patients. It, it, me, I look every, every year, I look forward to Shark Week. So I did a few doodles this morning on Shark Week. Hopefully you, you're enjoying it as well. Um, being a part of an Australian company, Shark Week takes on a, a whole new meaning 
uh, because some of the big boys are, are over there off the coasts of Australia. And Pete, by the way, happens to be a diver. So um, I'm sure he does. I'm sure he keeps himself safe. But, you know, th this is just a, one of the one of the things I would mention. Um, certainly our, our physical therapists want to take advantage of sharing images with the patients, highlighting areas where we might have bone on bone, highlighting additional areas where it's less severe bone on bone, but also an area here pointing an arrow pointing to a particle. So maybe we'll clean that up with an arthroscopy or maybe this particular patient is indicated for a full knee replacement. Um, here we have little check marks where the provider might be talking about the removal of screws. So we just want to make sure we're facilitating that once the provider gets the image again, um, easy to share it with the patient. Um, the session can be recorded with the patient's permission. So I don't know about you, the older I get, the more intimidated I am. And I want, if my wife can't be with me, I want her to at least be part of the care team with me. And so, you know, recording is something that I would absolutely take advantage of personally, and I request it. Um, yeah, so... Uh, one of our practices doesn't, they don't mind me sharing, they recently went live and this is their intake and counter form for a telehealth visit. So they want to capture the patient's first and last name, date of birth. Uh, they're, they're using a different EMR called Qualifax. It's a behavioral health EMR um, located, I think, primarily in the Midwestern part of the United States. And, uh, and, and they'll, they ask the patient to sign this. And so they have a protocol to go ahead and save this into their EMR as well. So one of the things we want to do is we want to work with our practices to make sure your forms are present for you on go live. If they're if those forms are a part of Practice Perfect EMR, fantastic. Uh, if there if there's something else you'd like to add that isn't necessarily embedded there, we're more than happy to do it with you. Um, I want just pulled up an example I mentioned earlier about a PHQ nine test. One of the things that's very uh, different in the way we've instrumented CoView is um, you know, some of our, our, our competitors actually give control of the provider's screen to the patient to fill out a PHQ-9. So right now, as the, as the provider, I have the ability to change the editor of this PHQ-9 to Danny as the patient, and I'm going to give that to Danny right now and ask Danny to go ahead and fill that out. So as I'm sitting with Danny, many providers want to be there, want to be present for the patient filling out the PHQ-9 so they can get a sense of of how the patient is feeling and answering the questions. So Danny, you can select the radio buttons there. and uh, We're not looking for any secrets, so pick fictitious answers. <laughs> and then once that, once Danny's done selecting, selecting those, I'll, I take control back um, as the provider and, and that locks the PHQ-9 and then I download that. And then as I mentioned, We'll have best practice uh, suggested best practices for you to then take that saved PHQ-9 assessment and put it into practice perfect EMR. Um, I know many, uh, several of you in the audience are speech pathologists, so this is probably near and dear to your heart. This is the clinical evaluation of language fundamentals. Uh, this particular one I pulled up happens to be the Australian and New Zealand edition. Uh, but we do have uh, the additions for the United States um, and Canada. So as we, as we scroll through, we see here's the table of contents. And I, as the clinician, as I'm showing you the table of contents now, but if I knew I wanted to go directly to word structure, for example, for ages five to eight, that's the patient that I have on the phone. I have a drop-down menu and I go right to word structure and it takes me to the word structure section. And I can ask the patient to identify based on the questions that I have, uh, which one is, is the one they would select. And when they do so, they get a dot, a dot appears on the patient, I'm sorry, on, on the child uh, that they're selecting. So that's our self five assessment. And bear with me one second here. So yeah, that's the, uh, and then we go back to the table of contents and you know, depending upon um, who the patient is that, that that's presenting, you'll, you know, uh, the, the provider will clearly know which one to go to based on what the plan is for that particular visit that day. One of the things I want to point out is when cell five activates for the patient, their pa the patient's video stops. So we don't want the patient looking at themselves while they're filling out these assessments. Uh, the, we want them authentic and present and in the moment. 
and really thinking about the questions before them. So um, that's a that's a cool part of the functionality of, of CoView um, that happens on a regular basis. Pete or Jenna, anything else that we should share with the group today? I think it'd be worth showing the, the dashboard, um, with, whether it be for the waiting area, which is great for large clinics or just the, um, the uh, more simple dashboard for solid practitioners. Um, and whilst you bring that up, I'll just mention about the, uh, the cell five. So um, the standardized assessments that we've developed in collaboration with Pearson Clinical, um, who are the global provider of, of standardized assessments, um, represents you know, a, a long project to, to solve many of the problems people using these assessments commonly face. Um, whether that be neuropsychologists or, or speeches or even teachers. But the, um, and some of those um, solutions of Kirk is pointing out there, but there's a couple of others that were maybe not clear. So when you open up a standardized assessment, um, the, the interface will change entirely for the, the, for the um, examinee, for the client, for your client, um, so that they, the, you know, their menus are hidden and their, their um, as Kirk mentioned, their video will be hidden from, from their perspective so that they're only able to focus just on the, the patient and the, uh, so, you know, the, the assessment itself. And then one of the, you know, a common issue clinicians face whilst doing assessments is it's unclear where, um, or, you know, what response the, the, the examinee is, is provided. So um, what you, you know, as, as Kirk showed that you know a little white dot will appear when when you click, but when the client clicks, um, a little a numbered annotation will appear. So a little number one will appear, or number two, number three, and that'll just help track um, what where, you know where the client has um, uh, is, is indicating on that screen. There's a whole bunch of other features um, which are probably outside the scope of this webinar. For example, um, you know if a client was to um, take a screenshot and then and then you know, put that on the internet somewhere. We have a way of tracking down uh, who took um, that screenshot, which is really important for helping preserve the the um, the privacy. Or, you know, the um, you know, protect these standardized assessments because what you don't want is all of those these um, these tests to be released online so that you know students can study. On these tests so um, that's a really exciting um, uh, tool the self five assessment um, and always happy to chat about that it, it, a lot of a lot of research um, has gone on to validate both the accuracy and the um, validity uh, of these telehealth based assessments sorry kirk over to you i don't, Pete, don't mean to Pete, rant you, about assessments Pete, do me a favor and verbally navigate us to the to the area that you were speaking about Oh, well, if you want to just jump into, you know, admin.coview.com slash team, uh, you, might, you might need to open up another tab uh, or you might, um, uh, sorry. So um, sh shall, I, shall I take over the screen share briefly? I, I happen to have it open right in front of me, if that'd be helpful. I'm not sure, Matt, can Pete take over the screen share? Yep, I'm gonna make Pete a co-host right now. So uh, you should have the ability to share your screen. Awesome. Great, thanks, Kurt. Uh... Just confirming you can all see my screen now. Fantastic, so yes. uh, the... Um, so when you first log into Coview, you'll appear in a um, in a dashboard. Actually, I'm just going to change the screen share very briefly. Uh... Okay, great. So when you first arrive in in, in Coview, you'll see a dashboard that looks like this, um, and uh, this from here, you'll be able to see um, 
uh, your waiting area, which has a, a list of all the participants who are currently waiting to see, um, see the call. And I might want to um, invite a number of participants to the call. So I'm just going to click on uh, invite here um, and I can send a, an email to whoever you want to, to, to your client. You might want to, so I might put in uh, my email, uh, select, you know, telehealth calls, the subject of that email um, and, you know, provides me an uh, invitation message. Uh, I can also send that invite to the, to the waiting area via SMS um, or, you know, you can just uh, copy a link to that waiting area and paste that wherever you normally communicate with your clients, right? You could paste that into your calendar invites. You could paste that in, um, I, mean, I believe that would be automatically sent out, but with the integration with, with um, Practice Perfect, but um, it, we, we make it extremely easy for you and your clients to, um, for your clients to always be able to find you. Um, you, uh, you have the ability to schedule sessions, which we don't need to go into now. Um, and there's a range of different types of rooms that you can use within CoView. So uh, at, there is a, um, I won't go into too much detail now, but there are sort of user rooms, which are all unique to each clinician. Um, but there are also group rooms and, and meeting rooms where you can meet with your, client, uh, with your colleagues or um, have uh, group therapy sessions uh, going on there. Um, as Kirk mentioned there are uh, data collections which store all of the, um, you know, the, the data that you might be generating during a call. So you've got the ability to record the audio from the sessions. You know, obviously there are reports generated from apps um, and there's uh, hundreds of, of apps available. Um, one common workflow you'll see if you're just a solo practitioner using the, the basics of CoView um, is you'll often, you you arrive on your user room, um, your sort of dashboard page, um, which is where you will often be um, sending your links out to your clients. Uh, and so getting started in the call, um, it's really simple. You just click you know, enter user room, uh, which is uh, how we got to where Kirk was uh, earlier. Um, I'll point out uh, whilst we're here that um, the, uh, from the client's perspective, once they've received a link, they just click on, click on that link on any device. So whether it be, you know, mobile, computer, tablet, and they can then open it in any browser, you know, Chrome, Safari. I assume you guys use the same browsers that we do over in Australia, but, um, and then they'll just be sitting in a nice waiting room, as Kirk mentioned, until, um, you know, the clinician lets them in. So, um, you know, what makes, I think, Covey really different to, you know, Zoom and, is, you know, all everything that's available in this dashboard that really helps you, um, you know, design virtual visits rather than just have a very basic video call. Um, I hope that helps clarify things. And I, I'll mention it's 5.30 in the morning here, so I'm uh, probably wasn't the most well-prepared uh, demo, but over to you, Kirk. No, that's great. That's great. So should we, uh, should we, we've got about 15 minutes left, Matt. Is that uh, a good time to, to pause to see if there are any questions from the group? Absolutely. So uh, first of all, thank you for uh, that presentation. I think that was really informative. Uh, we have received one question, so I'm just going to read it out for you so uh, you guys can address that. But uh, are the apps where the game's or for uh, where are the apps uh, for the games and therapy sessions located? Uh, also, are all apps included or do you pay per app? So uh, Pete, do you wanna, do you wanna jump? I, I, just, I just threw you out of your own session. <laughs> Maybe jump back in and show them where those things are kept. Um, depending upon what level that, uh, that a practice chooses between the, the various packages that we have. By the way, just to, to mention pricing, We've we've established uh, in scale discounted pricing for Practice Perfect EMRs installed base. So I just want to mention that. Um, and certain packages will include up to three um, three three assessments at no charge to the practice. So we'll when we have individual conversations about what package is right for you, we'll talk about does that package include those, but. Um, it could be all the way, all the way up to three of those. Um, and it also is is uh, that's three 
uh, like Pearson assessments, uh, but also we'll also do uh, th up to three of your own assessments at no charge to the practice. So we really want your practice of medicine to be that which rules the day. And Pete's going to show you the secret spot now where the, where the good stuff is kept. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, as Kirk mentioned, the, there are some basic apps that come uh, for free. And then there's a whole bunch of additional apps that are available in the app marketplace, um, which are many of them are for free and many, some of them are paid depending on, um, on the app. So once you're in the CoView call, I'll first show you where you access those apps. So I um, select uh, apps and tools here in the bottom uh, right hand corner. Um, and first it shows me the, the, the free, oh, sorry, the, the sort of standard apps. So that's the share and image or PDF. So that allows you to share an image or PDF into the call, which you can then look through together and annotate and work on together. Um, start a screen share, which you're all very familiar with by now. Add a whiteboard as Kirk dem demoed earlier and share a document camera, which just allows you to bring in addition, an additional camera into the call. So if I'm, for example, um, uh, a physiotherapist and I'm wanting to um, demonstrate something with my you know, arm, whilst also letting the client see my face, then I can have a second camera that allows you to, to do that. Then beneath that, you can see I've, I've installed, because this is our sort of admin account, hundreds of different apps, um, which by default won't be installed. Um, but, uh, I won't go into too much detail there, but the, I'll point out that if you did want to install um, a variety of you know, the additional apps, um, you can either just um, go to the app marketplace, Google CoView apps, and all those will come up and you can install them from there. Or if you're in the dashboard, you can scroll down to apps here on the, on the left um, and you can sort of find an app and, and install it um, from there. So let's say I wanted to install the, uh, the self, there's so many, I'll just, um, uh, sorry, I can't see my own. Yeah, so this is the app marketplace here. We've grouped them by mental health, speech and language path, manual therapy and um, general practice and specialists. This is the Australian page. Um, and so you just uh, select the one you want and then install it um, to your account. So I hope that uh, answers that question. Thank you very much. We've got another one. Is there a dark mode? Many of our clients have concussions and are light or screen sensitive. Can I take that one, Kirk? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. That's a great question. I mean, accessibility is something that's really important to us because obviously we're working with a lot of um, you know, complex clients and um, it's something we have built in. I've heard it. We don't in natively have a dark mode, but I have heard of many people using the dark mode in the ex like browser extensions and it worked perfectly fine for, for COVID, um, for, you know, for COVID. And I've even heard of them doing that. I had one psychologist once who wanted to use dark mode, not because of this great accessibility um, reason, but because she didn't like the reflection in her glasses of, of COVID being white. She wanted it, she wanted it all to be dark. So there was less reflection in the glasses. So, um, so yes, there's no, specific dark mode um, but it Kobe does work with other methods of having a dark mode so dark mode settings on the on the mac or the pc yeah i i don't know how it works i think there's browser extensions that you download um yeah i'm not sure great questions thanks everyone for your engagement anything else that we can uh that we can help with so we added another one. Can you hold group sessions? Is there a limit to a number of group members? And Kirk, I can see that you answered that one here. Yes, group calls for sure. There is currently a limit of 20 people. Maybe you want to elaborate on that? Yeah, no, we think it's a really important part of healthcare, particularly, you know, when you get to uh, a couple of things. First of all, sharing best practices. 
So internal calls, uh, awesome stuff. I, I'm a, as you know, as, as I mentioned, I'm a huge believer in establishing a standard of care, sharing best practices, particularly when we, you know, feel like we have a breakthrough in one of our therapies. Um, we do. Uh, we're having a lot of conversations right now with psychiatric hospitals, for example, um, and they have uh, IOP programs that align very, very nicely um, with with uh, with group uh, sessions. And uh, you know that's one of the areas that I, I have a particular interest in because I've seen some stats that say that you know folks who are recovering from an opioid addiction are, are actually have a higher attendance rate uh, through group therapy with video telehealth versus in person. We could all surmise a number of reasons why that might be, but awesome to have that. Um, so it's currently at 20. Thanks. And uh, Stephen P says, this is amazing. How do I sign up today? Question mark, question mark, question mark. Big smiley face. <laughs> answer, answer, answer. Um, I will put in the chat here. Um, a, two different links that easily you can sign up from depending on if you're in Canada or the US. And then I'll also put in a promotional code because you guys will get 20% off. Um, keep just as a reminder though, the sign up for the trial is completely free. But if you wanted to stay on, you'd want to redeem that code. And one other thing I just want to interject good timing is with our newest update, which is actually being released, uh, hoping actually to have it in my hands now. So hopefully being released uh, uh, early next week, the CoView integration piece is built into that next update. So we are ready to integrate with CoView basically right away. Beautiful. Thank you guys. Thank you. All right. And uh, just one more question. Can patients use iPhone and Android? Has there been a performance issue between phones and computers? I'll go first on that one. And anyone, any one of my colleagues who can add to it or amplify, that would be great. Um, phone and Android, absolutely. We are ubiquitous to um, tablets, PCs, Macs, phones, Androids. We really want to meet the consumer where they are and eliminate as much friction as possible so they can have the care that they need. Uh, I am not aware of, uh, of a performance issue. Um, oh, I'm sorry, that's not between uh, iPhone and Android, between phones and computers. I would say generally speaking, computers are a more reliable source uh, because they're, a lot of them are coming through landlines or fixed Wi-Fi environments and the, and the iPhones and Androids are out and about. But uh, but it's not a, it's not such that you would say it's a miserable experience. Um, I think driving would be a little bit rough for 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 a patient encounter. But we do have a lot of folks that are stationary that use their iPhones and Androids. So, and thanks. For the question. I'll just add that yeah, there should be no performance differences between computers and phones. I, I think Kirk's right that the the experience isn't as rich on right. a on a phone compared to a computer, but the performance generally ought to be the same. Awesome. Well, uh, thank you all so much. I guess if you guys don't have any other questions, uh, we could give you back four minutes. Uh, but thank you so much for making some time today to uh, learn more about CoView and the Practice Perfect integration. Thank you all very much, so much everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. And hopefully we'll speak to you all very soon. Take care. And thanks for, uh, Matt, for putting this together. And thanks. to Matt and Steve, good to be with you. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks, everyone, for coming. See you guys.